What up, Super Fun Force? I'm back and I'm excited. I've been trying to catch up on a lot of Beyblade. They got Nerf stuff coming and some Tobots retro toys. But for today, guys, we're going to look at the new B203. This set is pretty cool. 100% recommend this, guys, right off the bat. And uh, today we're going to talk about some things that I've noticed about it really quickly. And then, of course, I'll follow up with some future videos on my best combos. Now, let's take a look at the box, too. It's fantastic. This box is large. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hold on to it because uh, it's cool to have, you know, packages from, you know, Japan, having some uh, retro stuff. Obviously a lot of cool information in Japanese, talking about the um, the feature here where you can, you know, break apart the energy layers and then recombine them. And then of course here we have uh, Super Hyperion, we have King Helios, this is MR, the also MR, and then of course we have the, uh, the Divine Bell right here with the gold. So let's get right into it, guys. I'm gonna keep this here in the background. It's a nice little uh, set piece. I'm also going to bust out my weight scale here because there's some interesting things. Um, make sure this is on. Yeah, there's some interesting things here to take a look at. So first of all, let's get into the uh, bell. Get this one out of the way really quickly. Again, um, you know, it's pretty interesting that they've decided to put a lot of effort into this uh, this character and this Beyblade. Uh, not quite my favorite, uh, but, you know, it's still interesting to see how they did the combiner. I was all on board from the beginning of the season to see the first true super combiner. But, um, you know... I think they, they kind of went a little too far. I wish they started giving us other, you know, frames and more options to customize other bays. But still, this is hopefully a good sign of things to come. Maybe in the next uh, series or the following releases, whether they stick with BU for a while longer or go to 4th Gen, hopefully they'll still create more um, customization with like, you know, different uh, attachments again to the frames like they did in GT or the frames to the Forge Discs. And of course, like these new gimmicks where you can add on additional armor pieces, top, bottom, you know, other gears and stuff like that. So let's take a look here really quick. So the first thing I noticed observation wise is I'm not sure what the purpose is of this divine yet. You know, the new uh, H gear with the uh, specific armor, because again, it's not really good to use this armor on anyone else except for the bell, which is, you know, sad. It's cool, but sad because, you know, it's a unique piece custom, but again, uh, unfortunately cannot be used with any other bays. I mean, you can, but you can attach the H gear as I'm about to show you. So yeah, that's again, a pro and a con. And again, they gave us a new core, new design. It looks like the uh, the Valkyries from before, the straight on flat, you know, style, uh, instead of like the sideways, I guess, you know, I mean, they're all obviously flat. Uh, then again, it gives you the burst stopper inside. All right, so why I'm, why I'm saying this is an interesting release is because look, when you have the L gear, right it's 31.86 on my copy of it right and this is cool because look you have the metal weights in between the three metal pieces up here which again i don't really think do much i mean it gives you a very slight sliver of health or uh weight i should say um i was thinking like health like hp and like power and stuff like that but you know it gives you a little bit just a tad bit of power on this side you know where the metal is but as you can see it's so like hollowed out and empty that um you know, I don't really think it actually makes a difference. So, um, well, you know, and again, it's basically lighter than the dangerous layer, right? With hard rubber, which I like better. But again, this one is 31, 8, 6, 8, 7 ish. Yeah. Now, look, here we have the H gear with the new armor 32.35. So it's barely, barely half a gram heavier. Again, this could also be due to the variation of the layer, but with this added armor, and plastic piece you're only getting like barely half a gram so again i don't understand why you would want to have this over this for example because they kind of do the same thing right like this puts weight up here a little bit even though it's plastic and then the central heavy uh, metal armor there is kind of the same here right just going around the main difference though i will say is that this has to be in high mode right and then this one What's interesting is you can actually flip it around, put the armor on top, and then you can actually add the plastic layer underneath for low mode, which again is strange if it's just added weight because you know you can see there's like little slots right there where these plug in. Actually, I think this side needs to go on first. The side that has a little more of the hook, yeah. Yeah, one side has like a little bit more of a hook, so you hook that in and you press the other. And I mean, that's okay, right? Like, it comes with uh, with this, actually. Let's put like this right here. So for example, here's like one combination. Like, it's, it's interesting, but like, again, it's not like it's gonna make any extra contact. 
and maybe, you know, I'll do some more testing now, but like, you know, maybe they purposely have this like curled up empty hollowness, just kind of like the, the vice leopard that had like the bite, you know, like maybe this is supposed to somehow kind of like bite or, you know, affect the other layer catching it in there. But again, from my testing, it doesn't really do much. You know, of course we also have the new added uh, A-gear. Uh, let's take a look at something really quick. Obviously you can't add the, uh, the A-gear anymore. Right, because like it's obviously blocked, right? Like that that layer up there. Although I'm curious about something. Wait a second. I'm doing this first unboxing here with you guys, so this is really cool. Actually, I'm sure you can add the egg here, right? Because wait, wait, where are those little parts that are normally? Oh, you know what? Here we go. Duh. All right. Let's find out if, in fact. Because again, I'm uh, I'm excited because I didn't uh, I didn't uh, spoil anything here. I didn't watch any videos or any reviews or anything like that. I did it all myself when I get it. Yeah, looks like actually you can put in the full combiner. So again, there's that little hook I was talking about. See that little hook right there. So you want to hook that side in first. And then put the other one in. Okay, so wait, actually, then let's say you add, or we go with, um, go with like the D gear. And then now you kind of have like the full, full version. Okay, so there you go now. But it's the same, you know, it's like when you add the A gear to this, right, right here, you kind of get the same little, uh, little gap opening right there. And then of course, this little space here is just kind of filled in, but it doesn't really do too much. But it'll be interesting to see uh, and I just want to end up saying like, yeah, it looks really cool. Like I said, I like the concept. I want to see us hopefully having this ability to do with almost all the bays in the future releases. Like it'd be super cool. You know, my, my prediction here is like, as we start to see all this combination, you know, with, especially with the new, like, you know, splitting the uh, layers apart, wouldn't it be amazing to have just nearly unlimited customization in the bays? Like that'd be fantastic. Seriously, you guys can do it, Takara Tomi. So there we guys go. It looks, I think it looks awesome. You know, as far as the performance goes, I'll have to test it some more because, again, it's been a little bit underwhelming, but I wouldn't say, you know, uh, it's impossible to win with it, but it's, uh, and right now, the combination is, is a little bit difficult to find, you know, something like super consistent. But there you guys go. Then I want to end up just saying for this, uh, you know, Bearing Drift seems pretty powerful. I don't think it's as OP as everybody's worried about because, you know, I, I've uh, used this combo against other combos that use, um, you know, like Mobius, uh, Zone Dash, High Extend Plus, bearing bearing dash and the original drift and it almost seems about even you know in most matches again it depends more on the combination not just like oh you just slap this layer on or this um this driver on any uh, layer and it's like unbeatable uh, it does have the bearing inside of it the metal bearing and it has like the wide extra drift bottom here but i actually prefer uh i prefer bearing to this honestly but definitely i'll be making some combos with it there was a special edition in japan that had the metal plate right there. Uh, this is the only one that's available widely right now in production, which is the regular plastic. Hopefully we don't get a dash version. I don't, I don't think we're going to need one, right? We don't have a dash for the regular uh, drift. We only have the metal. So, you know, maybe they'll release that metal one eventually for a little bit more weight or with some of the, um, the rubber slope lock cores like Curbeus and Bahamut. All right, guys. So I'll do some more testing with this, but that's my overall impression. Like I said, I'm just hoping that, uh, there's some good combination with it, but I do like the, the theme of this. Like this is kind of like the best mode to make it right now, right? All right, now what you guys have all been waiting for, we got the Helios and Hyperion. Um, I also have the cores, sorry guys, I took the cores out. All right, let me grab them for you guys. I have them on my other combinations here, but you guys don't need to see it, you know what I mean? Because you guys already know the power, what's up. So I know I got, I got the, uh, the uh, Helios on the uh, eight dragons, and then I have the, uh, the Hyperion right here, one of my special combos coming up in a future video. So look out for that. Anyways, uh, what the idea is here, I'm just gonna placeholder them with a right spinning and a left spinning core like that. So what's interesting here is, you know, again, we have this really cool concept where Half is rubber, half is metal. And then of course you just literally, you can see the, the flat side here, flat side. You just like slide it up and out. Uh, yep. And then you're done. So 
Really quickly, what I want to notice, uh, or what I want to let you guys know that I noticed, the uh, the blue is actually heavier. So Helios, watch, if we look at the Helios layer, if we combine the Helios with Melon Rubber, we get 1571, at least on my copy. And then if we combine the Hyperion, 1562. So it's like 0.11 grams heavier. But again, it's just interesting to note. One other thing that I'm looking at when I build, I'm really excited about this because I don't know how much of a difference it's gonna make, but check this out. When you put these two together, it's almost like a judgment layer because for the first time we have a really thick piece of rubber here, thick piece of rubber here. Now granted, I'm not saying that this is just gonna be the ultimate attack Beyblade because again, when you play at the Dynamite Bow Stadium, they've basically leveled the playing field between stamina, defense, and attack power. But I mean, it should find a way to attack and hit hard. Now, is this the best combination for this? I don't know yet. Maybe it is good to have the half side middle. But anyways, that's my first observation here. The other uh, observation is that this combination, right, has the, um, the blade spinning in and in. So this is what I'm also thinking about. Is it gonna make a big difference that half the time this is gonna hit into the opponent's bay, depending on your spin direction, and then half the time it's gonna hit on the smooth back end so that's something that i want to try out a little bit more because again these blades aren't exactly the most like spiky but this is to me in my mind the first time we're actually able to put a blade direction and spin it at the opposing bay in the same spin direction right because normally what you get like in any um you know like for example let's just i have the the chain right here so the chain look the blades kind of go this way but you spin to the right. So you're always hitting with the backsides of them, right? Uh, and again, with some, some of the characters like Valkyrie, that's fine. Let's grab a Valkyrie right here. Because like I mentioned before, here's a Valkyrie. So the blades go this way, but it's not like hitting you spinning left, right? It's hitting you by spinning right, like behind the blade, which is fine because this is the best Valkyrie layer for that because again, it has the, uh, the rubber and it has that slant protrusion that's just enough to put uh, enough power into an attack that way. But anyways, that's what I'm curious about because, for example, if you did this, what's possible now for the first time is I can literally put together a left spin Hyperion, but I can spin it to the right, right? See what I did there? Hey. But yeah, so for example, what's really cool about both of these is they're dual spin no matter what, which means there's a wide gap here. So it doesn't matter if you put a left or right spin, it's up to you. So again, furthering the, uh, the combination and customization. But what I'm saying here is like, if I put a right spin, right, now it's gonna actually spin to the right and hit with the blade. So that's pretty cool. And again, not sure if that's gonna make a big difference, but it's something cool to note. Whereas if you just went to the normal Helios, right, like left spin, it's kind of the same style before, like it's going behind. So the question is this, like how much testing can you do to say, well, it's better for this to spin to the right. And maybe in certain matchups, it's actually better spin to the left. Or you can just say, you know what? If I do 50-50 like this, then no matter what, at some point I'm hitting into the layer with the blade and at the other time I'm hitting with the backside. And again, just uh, it's just something interesting to note. Finally, what I wanna say is when you combine the rubbers together, here's something that's gonna be interesting. Well, let's just do this. Let's combine the rubbers together. We get 15.52. And if we were to combine the metals together, 17.6, interesting. So almost two grams difference. So that is true. You know, this actually, in this case, this metal here is a little bit heavier than the rubber. Now, that's fine because as you can see at the bottom here, these are very hollowed out. It's almost like a Hasbro layer where it feels like it's cheap or whatever, but it's not because obviously there's metal here, you know, the metal bolts. But what's interesting is that this one has a pretty decent rubber fill, so I thought this would be a little bit closer in weight. The other thing that's interesting, don't know how much of a difference this will make, when you compare the two rubbers, it's interesting to note that the rubber here on the top is a little bit less. Can you see that, right? It's a little bit less on the red, on the, uh, the Hyperion side, on the top. But if you look at it from the side, interestingly enough, Gosh, I'm saying interesting too much, guys. I'm gonna switch that up. My bad. 
All right, when you look at it from the side, the rubber is actually thicker and more complete along the entire edge and underneath. So when you look here, right, you can see that the rubber is not completely on the blade outer edge on Helios. Notice that? So that to me means like there might be a slight performance difference. You know, how intentional was that for Taco to tell me? Again, what type of difference does that actually make in terms of, you know, the battles? We'll have to see. But again, something to take into consideration when building this combination. Now, again, if you're going to do rubber on rubber, probably doesn't matter as much. Um, and if you do metal and rubber, the final thing to think about is like, again, do you want to go in a full direction spin? Like you can, you can go full left spin, you know, normally a left spin Helios, but now you can spin it to the right. And then the same thing with Hyperion, right? You can put together a full right spinning Hyperion, right? But now you can spin it to the left, right? You can spin it to the left and hit with the blade. So that's my, my um, initial observations and my thoughts. I think uh, Takaratomi did a great thing by giving us all of these options and things to, to, you know, think about and consider when customizing, you know, but again, who knows, you know, maybe it doesn't really matter if, if um, Helios is spinning to the left or to the right. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Uh, at the same time, you can just kind of like say, you know what, I'm going to do the 50-50 because as long as I have one direction spinning, you know, towards and one against, then at the same, you know, I'm kind of getting the benefit half the time for each side. So that might, you know, in my opinion, that might just be the best way to go, right? Unless you really just want to do the, uh, the half and half here. Now, when these are actually hitting in combat, it's also, you know, something to think about where the rubber side is obviously going to have a bit more of the recoil. And then the metal side, I mean, I guess that could also hit pretty hard, but maybe it's more of just like a, I don't know, maybe it's more to me like you give this a uneven weight distribution, you know, this being slightly heavy, so that the attack, it kind of swings it around so that way, you know, maybe it does hit a little bit harder here, but also when it swings and attacks, then it's going to hit with the rubber, you know, with more of like a uh, aggressive, pa an aggressive pattern, right? Whereas, you know, if you have double rubber or you have du double metal, maybe it's more just going to stay solid, stationary, you know, so again, maybe you do stationary attacker, maybe you still try to focus on a stamina defense build. Bottom line, guys, there is a lot to have fun with. And again, think about when building out these combos. So get it, guys. I don't think you necessarily need two, you know, like two sets or doubles of all of these. Again, I'm, I'm probably going to do it just so I can have, a, you know, a collector piece or whatever for my favorite combos. But again, you know, as long as you take into consideration the fact that you can just, you know, split them 50-50, the direction here, I don't think you need to have like every combination like a, a blue on blue, you know, a, a Helios on Helios, Hyperion on Hyperion, you know, and um, and a split. I think, um, you know, I think there'll be different ways to customize it, but the cool part is as long as you make a combo that kind of fits your 5G or 3G team and fits your, your theme and your style if you want to go offense, defense, stamina balance, then uh, it's it's all there for you guys. So again, 100%. Um, last thing I'll just quickly say is it also does come with this. I didn't bust it open yet, but it comes with like, you know, the best now string launcher. And what I mean by best is, you know, it's still good to have the regular launchers, right? But you know, this one has a marginally longer, slightly longer cord pull, which I don't think is gonna equal that much. You know, I think at this point we have pretty much the maximum amount of cord pull we need. Uh, and of course, uh, I think all the, the power and the torque from the sword launcher is the best for attacking. Uh, but this also has a metal bearing. That's actually a really cool piece uh, that they don't really um, they don't really give us access to. So this is actually my first metal bearing, which just like the driver here, uh, is going to make things a lot you know smoother in rotation. So you can't you can't get this unless you have the other battle set from um, the bell, the dynamite bell. And now they they decide to put it in this set. I'm glad they did. But, you know, it just makes me wonder, like, why won't they just release this for all of them, you know? But regardless, the, another uh, another important reason to get this set so you can have at least one of the bearing driver, or excuse me, launchers, I would uh, I would say definitely definitely grab this. So, yeah, there's a lot here to like. Um, and just to continue the, you know, the, the, the customization, the modification, and the themes and everything, it's really cool to see, you know, the um the helios and the hyperion back in uh, bu ultimate and i hope the series keeps going you know oh and last thing it's really cool i'm sure you guys have noticed this and other people have mentioned but when you do the split red blue style like this i like how it actually turns purple when it's spinning 
I noticed that with a lot of combinations, right? The the colors and the designs blur. So there's like a cool like style point and you know fashion, I guess you could say, when you do combinations that actually look, you know, different when they they spin and they rotate. But there you guys go. Uh, look forward to uh, doing some more battles and videos and combos and you know trying to find out what's ideal and what my favorite combo is going to be for these guys. All right, thanks so much for liking and subscribing, guys. Again. Keep up uh, with this channel, please. I got a bunch of Beyblade stuff coming along. And of course, I've, uh, again, I've narrowed it down to, uh, to more uh, like Nerf stuff, uh, you know, Tobots, and just some fun collectible retro toys and uh, some video game talk, guys. So again, it's why it's a super fun force. So I uh, hope you uh, hang along and uh, hang along for the adventure. All right, keep a face, say a prayer. Spread that love. Be positive. Be thankful. Coming back at you. Peace.